Right, I've been DJing for three years this October and it was at a boat party, my friend's boat party in Worcester and it was his birthday, his name's Steve and he basically, some of the DJs didn't turn up and so he phoned me and says, oh, bring your records and I'd only been doing it sort of two months prior to that sort of mixing, going on the decks. Um, so I borrowed all my friend's records and went to this boat party, played for about an hour and a half and uh, I was only supposed to play for about half an hour but they couldn't get me off so <laughs> so uh, I, I sort of played uh, yeah, for about an hour and a half, absolutely loved it, went back on a bit later on and uh, from there there was uh, about two or three promoters from clubs in Birmingham that um, asked me to do them some tapes and uh, just basically were interested in me playing at some of their clubs. So it started like that, really. And uh, I met Madders. Well, I knew Madders anyway. I used to go to Money Pennies, met Madders. Madders started a tiny little um, place in Burton that I became resident at. And uh, I think I used to play for £20 and he used to give me pound coins every time, <laughs> something like that. So um, that was like, yeah, three years ago. So, And then I, was, um, I got a residency in Birmingham, which was my first residency um, in the Midlands. And then a Sunday Central came along and he made me a first resident. So I was quite chuffed with that. So yeah, that's how it all started. <laughs> Saturday Central has just started, well Sunday Central has now moved to the Saturday so basically I've got a Saturday residency which I haven't ever had before because I feel as if you have to, on the Saturdays you need to go around all the country playing at the bigger clubs and if I think if you've got a residency every week on a Saturday in one place then you don't get your name around so what I decided was go and play at the, all the other guest DJ at all the other clubs in the country and then settle down to a residency when I feel that it was necessary and Sunday Central couldn't have asked for a better place to be a Saturday resident at so yeah but it's good it's good to have the difference I won't play there every week I'll play um, I'll sort of play once every fortnight something in Birmingham but I'm playing sort of an early set so I can go off and do something um, anyway, like last weekend I did Birmingham and Bristol, so that was fine. A lot of the clubs are open until sort of 4 or 5 in the morning on Saturday, so I could sort of fit two in, so I've got the best of both worlds, really, so that's cool. <laughs> well, last weekend was um, Friday. I, I usually play on a Thursday. I probably do the universities on a Thursday, but that's not really a late night. On the Saturday, on the Fridays, I'll do um, two gigs like in Swindon. I'm resident um, at the Brunel Rooms in Swindon now, so I'll play there and then I'll come up to Birmingham, probably play somewhere there till six in the morning, then um, go home, have a sleep, sort my records out for the Saturday. And last weekend, I did. Um, Sunday Central, opening set till 11 and then drove down to Bristol where I um, did 3 till 5 down there and then I was supposed to do the after party on the Sunday but I was too shattered so um, I sorted somebody else out to do that and uh, so basically it's like four, a minimum of four uh, plays a weekend so it's quite cool. Um, you have to come used to it. It, is, it can be quite lonely. Like the, two weeks ago, I went to Vancouver and I was there for six days and I went out on my own, came back on my own. It was quite, it's an experience, you know, it's, it's, it is quite scary, be, especially like being a girl, going to the, all the different airports, not knowing where I'm going, being picked up by people I've never met before. So it's quite, you know, it is quite scary, but I love doing, you know, going to all these different places. It's like, it's excellent. So. I think I was really lucky from, I think, the people that I knew anyway and um, the people that I knew from Birmingham. I used to go clubbing before, you see, about a couple of years. I've been sort of clubbing for five years. I used to go to the diff to Money Pennies or to Wobble, Tin Tins, that shut down now. Um, and you just get used to meeting these people and then um, it just happens that one of them is doing a club or like I met Madders, Madders doing the club and he's basically doing really well for himself. Um, the venture of Sunday Central, I think, is bigger than he ever thought it was going to be anyway. So, and because I knew him from before that, I've known him for five years, I was an ideal person for him to put in, obviously, anyway. So I think it is um, the experience of, I, you know, I, I was lucky to meet the people that I, I actually work for now, really. We've been friends and, and it's been, they've been really good to me. So that's cool. Um, pumping Euro house, German trance and um, but all uplifting no but well, I don't really play very deep I play just uplifting pumping house you know 
the best hard house tunes that are out at the moment, I, I obviously like and play a lot of the tidy track stuff, triply tracks, things like that. So they're more upfront hard house, which um, I love playing that kind of stuff. So and I usually play at the end of a set, um, end of a night as well, if I go out and guess. So when, once you're at a club and the DJ's going up on a level, you've got to take that to an extra level. And that's what I feel as if I'm good at doing, you know, taking it up to a, an, another notch when I get, you know, guest DJ at the place with pumping tunes, really. That's it. <laughs> One of the best ones lately was um, probably over in Vancouver uh, to four and a half thousand people on the Indian Reserve. Um, myself and Savage, Seb Fontaine, um, all English DJs out there who hadn't been, well Anne's been there before but me and Seb hadn't and uh, basically just the feel of four and a half thousand people looking at you and just having a vibe of them you know they're just dancing in this middle of this field they don't they wouldn't care where they are you know it was freezing cold and we just had an excellent time it was like I couldn't I wanted a video and take it back to my friends because I couldn't express to them how amazing it feels to stand in front of all those people when they're all smiling at you and you're like oh, overwhelmed really it was a brilliant experience yeah so I can't think what a bad experience um probably when I break the decks, which I, I seem to have this uh, thing that people, I go into a club and people say, oh, the decks are fine, There's no one's ever broke them before. And I, halfway through my set, they have to go and get a, me a replacement one because I don't know what it is. It must be this electricity, something. I don't know what I do. I don't mean to do it. I just seem to break a lot of the equipment. <laughs> it's not my fault, I don't think. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> I don't kick it or anything, honest. <laughs> <laughs> well, somebody who's um, on the same level as the people that are in the crowd, the, one, the people that are listening to you, the people that are paid to come and see you. If you're on the same level and you talk to them, you're good at what you do and you have a vibe with them where everyone, you're, making, you're there to make everyone happy. I think a good DJ is somebody who does that, who's not too big for their boots, who, you know, there's, there is a, quite a few of them that are like that, unfortunately, that, but they still get on anyway. You know, you get, if you're a good DJ, it's, you get the respect from the crowd, but I think if you're on that same level as the crowd, which I feel that I do, um, that they respect you for it. It's just, I feel that I'm good at what I do and, and I enjoy it so much, so, yeah. I've just been into the studio and that's the first time I've ever really experienced in a studio and I don't know what really, um, I didn't really want to go into a studio and make any music. I thought, no, I'll leave that to the people that I play the tunes of because I feel that they're good at what they do. I wasn't even, I, it didn't, a lot of people say once you're into DJing you like to progress into something else, but I wasn't, I'm not that bothered. But now since I've been into a studio, that's it now, I can't get out of it. <laughs> it's like, you know, I love to, I love going into the studio. The best thing is to play a tune that you've made and take it to a club and see the reactions of different people. That's another stage fur further to my DJing. It's, it's another experience that's another level up and it's quite, it's, quite strange feeling you know studio works just so uh, it's very time consuming but it's worth it in the end so much like i've only just done one tune and um if i can do another two three four this year i would just be so pleased it would be a wonderful feeling to be able to i feel as if um I'm not just a DJ then I have you know people say oh this that and the other you can imagine what people say but um and I feel as if I've sort of saying well I can actually go into a studio I do know what to do and uh, well, obviously with the help of some engineers but um I think in a year's time I'll be producing and engineering my own tunes because I feel that um I've got the intelligence to be able to do that and the studio and the people and the equipment to do that which is I'm really lucky to have really yeah Last October, I went down to Radio 1 to do some pilot shows down there because um, I feel that Radio 1's moving a lot at the moment and they're looking for other DJs and it's going more, it is going more dancey like Radio 1 is, especially in the evenings, Fridays, Saturdays with Pete and Jules and Danny. And uh, they were looking for somebody for a Saturday and they were looking for a girl. So I went down and did some um, pilot shows with Jeff Young, the engineer, and 
Um, I haven't really heard anything about it at the moment, but it takes just so long to be able to do it. But tomorrow I'm going to do a Galaxy show anyway. I do like radio. It's cool. I would like to... I don't know whether I'd have time, though. It's, you know, <laughs> it's quite... Everything's moving so quick at the minute with DJing. Like, next weekend I've got eight gigs and I'm going into the studio. And um, if radio came into it, you know... I'm, I just never sleep. I <laughs> you know, don't know how Jules that do it half the time. They must be so tired. But at the end of the day, if you love what you're doing, you, um, anything that's involved in the music that you're doing, I'd love to do it, yeah. Probably just work really hard and do lots of tapes and send them out, be at the places that you need to be. It is quite hard work to, and you just ha basically have to pester people. I pestered some, you know, people for like a year, you know, please, please let me play. I'll do it for nothing and all this, but it, and it worked out in the end. You've got to have that dedication to be able to do that. And um, if you don't think you've got it, then it's not even worth trying because there's so many people at the moment trying to, um, well, wanting to be a DJ and, um, you know, there's so many good people that you feel sorry for. I do feel guilty. I'm like, oh, I'm sorry that I've only done it in like a few years. But at the end of the day, it's it's luck and it being good at what you do. You've got to believe that you are good and be good as well at what you do. And just be a genuine person and uh, just see what happens. Lots of practice, lots of hours of practicing and uh, meeting the right people and going to you know, going to the clubs and annoying all the promoters. <laughs> exactly what I did. <laughs> so that's my advice probably, yeah. <laughs>